Nathan, welcome to St Mary's. You're here in the home dressing room as the new boss of Southampton Football Club. How does that sound? Um, pretty amazing, really. Um, as I said, it's been a whirlwind time, um, but I'm really, sort of really proud to, to be given this opportunity at the, at the wonderfully traditional football club. Um, I know a lot about the club from, from back in the days of, you know, of the Dell to, to coming here to, to St Mary's. And, uh, and I said, it's, it, it's a wonderful football club. A lot of my family are Southampton fans, so it doesn't half help um, on my wife's side. Uh, but no, I, I feel really, really proud to be given the opportunity and, and as I said, it's, uh, I'm really looking forward to get started. A few excited members of the family then at this news? <laughs> Just my wife's side, they're all Southampton fans. I think um, uh, her great-grandfather played for the club. Um, her grandfather was a massive you know, season ticket holder that brought both his sons, which is obviously uh, my father-in-law and, 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 and his brother. So they're massive and then uh, her, her brother is, is a big Southampton fan as well. So on their side, it's, it's amazing. No pressure for me, obviously, in, in keeping the family happy, um, but it's wonderful for them as well, you know, so it's, it's a real family affair. You've had amazing success with Luton Town, building that club up from League Two to Championship playoffs last season in contention again this season. What makes the lure of this club so strong to prize you away from that? It, it had to be something specific, really, because Luton's a wonderful football club, and you know everything there is geared towards success, the alignment from top to bottom, and that was the thing I felt this year as well. Um, I feel this is a real calculated club. Um, obviously, I wanted to manage in the Premier League. I'd, I'd, I'd dreamt of that since I'd become a, a coach and a manager, but. This club in particular, because of how it's run, because of the structure, because of how they look deeper than just results, um, really appeals to me. You know, th th there's certain things which are specific um, of, of how they look, what they look for, things that we've been doing well at Luton, they want to implement here. So that was the big pull for me. It's not just, well, OK, you've got results on uh, at Luton, we, we want you. It's you've got results because of certain things, you've done things in a certain way and, and we do them here. So there's an alignment, it's, it's like a calculated move really and it's always a gamble when, when you employ a manager, when you, you take a job at a football club. But for me this is, this is one that I'm, I'm, one I'm excited about but two, I really feel like an impact. Yeah, it sounds like you're kind of talking about the culture of a club and how did you manage to build such a strong culture at Luton and what do you want Southampton to look like in terms of that day-to-day -day environment at the training ground and relationships between staff? Well, look, we've, we've built a wonderful culture at, at, at Luton that was professional, was innovative, was disciplined, it was self-inclusive, but we wanted to become this, this really progressive club that, that competes and doesn't rely on budgets or doesn't rely on spending a load of money to do so. Um, we develop young players, we play a certain way, clear identity about how we do stuff, not just how we play, but how we do stuff. And those are things that, that, that are already here, um, yet there's, there's going to be a different identity in terms of how we play and how we go about things. But I know that there's a good culture here, I know that there's a good environment, all we're going to do is maybe add to it certain tweaks and then just include everyone because no manager can do that, it, it has to be a buy-in from everyone, players, staff board, owners, every single thing has to be aligned and, and I feel we can do that here. You touched on it there, but you've worked with young players a lot, you've developed young players. How excited are you by the squad you're inheriting here? Because it is a very young squad with so much potential. Look, again, that's, that's the pull. It, it, there's so many things you know, that, that are specific to how, how I work and how my, my team works in terms of working with younger players, in terms of not getting ready-made and developing them, putting them into a system and a style and a philosophy that, 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 is, that has a clear identity and so on. And then hopefully getting the best out of them and making them better and then hopefully everyone moves forward. And if some individuals move, move quicker than the, than the club, then all, so be it. But we have others then that, that can replace those. So it's, it's that hunger, that aggressive environment that we want to create. And, and it's one that wants to win football games because that's the most important thing. What's your vision for how you want your Southampton team to look on the pitch? I, I want us to have a clear identity. That's what I want us to do. And I want people to say, look, that's how Southampton play, you know, and, and, and that, that, that's the big thing. How we do that is, is with the work every single day on the training ground, the work in meetings, the, 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 the talks we have, um, how we behave, everything goes towards us being a certain type of team. Now, I wouldn't want to say too much now in terms of look, this is how we're going to play, this is what we're going to be, but we will have a clear identity. Given time, we will have a clear identity that hopefully 
it uh, plays on the front foot, wins games or wins enough games so that we are, we are uh, successful at Premier League level. This is an unprecedented situation really to come into a club at this time of year with a long break on the horizon but might that actually be a benefit to you to have those sort of six weeks working with the players understanding the squad that you've inherited? Absolutely, you know, I, I need that. The, the Having the time to work with them not revolving around games and not revolving around results and so on is a big is a big bonus. You know, it really is. It's like a mini preseason or a preseason, if you like. So it'll give me um, one a, an opportunity to to put a body of work together so that they know exactly what was expected of them. Two, build relationships both with staff and players, and then for us really to go into you know the second half of the season, if you like, and and, and giving us the best possible possible chance of winning winning football games and and it is going to be vital this this break because it, it just gives me time and gives us as, as a staff time to, to implement something that that we're going to need moving forward. Before that there's not a lot of time until the game at Anfield on Saturday how do you use these 48 hours to get everything possible that you can in, into the squad and those messages that you want to get across? Look, what, what we have to do is make sure that that we're around, that hopefully we get an uplift from the players in terms of work rate and then we're going to need to go there and play very, very well because you know, Liverpool are a wonderful team. So I don't think you're going to see a Nathan Jones team immediately. That's, you know, um, um, that's very, very difficult to do. So it'll only be minor tweaks and, and, and letting the, the staff, the good staff that are here, um, you know, give us help on that. In terms of a Nathan Jones team, you've said about what you want to see from them. With the break coming up, does that you've spoken about having a bit more time, but mm. can you implement everything that you want to implement in that period, or does it need to be a gradual progression to get your ideas across? No, there will be a gradual progression, but what we will do, we will paint a picture of, of what we would like to become. Now, how quickly we can become that team depends on the buy-in from players and, and staff and everyone. Um, a little bit of luck, a bit of God's will, and uh, how how much time we really get with them. But you know, we'll have a clear way of playing. We we will give them you know a, a, a clear way of training so that we become that team, and then from there, hopefully we'll become better. So you'll see us taking shape. Yeah, a month is a, well, six months to six weeks is a real good chunk of time to to implement something. But it will evolve week in week out, and and I said it, it won't happen overnight. For you personally, for your first. Premier League game as a manager to be at Anfield up against Jurgen Klopp that's pretty special isn't it? It, it is look it uh, I wouldn't shy away from it it's it's uh, excitingly you know difficult you know in terms of that um, it, it's wonderful to go up against one of the one of the best coaches in the world someone with a track record of, of winning lots and lots of things someone that's very innovative um, someone that's driven you know uh, and there's a lot of characteristics w within within Jürgen that, that, that I have, you know, in, in terms of that. And uh, if I can have half as good a career as him, then I'd be delighted. But we also know it's going to be a very, very difficult game and it's a bit of a baptism of fire um, to go into Anfield and, and expect to, to really play well under, under difficult circumstances. So, so, look, I'm really excited about the challenge, but we also know that, you know, it's going to be a tough task, so we have to, we're going to have to be at our best. Just finally, what would be your message to the Southampton supporters as we embark on this new chapter together? I, look, I'm I'm really excited. I I want um, I, I work tirelessly to, to to create environments and cultures that are that are aggressive, that are front-footed, that, that want to win football games. Um, I I want Southampton to have a clear identity. I want us to be a team that that the fans can be really really proud of and can relate to. You know, as I said, I, I want the people of Southampton to look at the, the players and be proud of, of of that team and how they go about their work and win, lose or draw. They know that they've got a proper group and a proper team, and that, that, that wants to play for Southampton, and that's that's what I want to really, you know, uh, that's what I want to really implement here. And there's a great group. I know that there's a real good group. Um, yes, it's going to take a little bit of time to implement that. All we want to do, but I know that that if we get the back end of the players, if the fans get behind us, if we are united as as one team, one goal in terms of everything, I know that we can be be successful at this level. We've seen you're a passionate guy. Is that relationship with the fans, is that important to you to build that as well? Absolutely. You know, we will build that, I'm sure. Um, results take that. Performances take that. 
yeah, I'm a passionate guy. I want to win. I, you know, sometimes that gets the better of me at, at, at times, but it all comes from a good place. I work very hard. I make many sacrifices to be the best I can be. So do my family. Um, so, I, you know, I, I want to build that rapport with them. I want them to see that they have a manager that cares about their football club. But first and foremost, they have to see that manager that can that can do good work at their football club and take the club forward. And if we, if we can prove that in the initial period, then I'm sure we'll build a wonderful rapport that, that, that can drive a club forward.